Okay, so we have a quick review of the Aston Starlight. Um, it's a end capture, so the uh, membrane is facing out the front. And um, these are laser mics. So by pressing this button here, I can create a so that allows me to di direct the microphone precisely. Um, this is called a sintered head. It's made by a special process whereby equally sized metal balls, small balls, are uh, heat bonded together, and it's very strong. And as you'll see a bit later, it allows. Uh, the internal structure can be different from capsule covers that need to be braced. But the actual membrane is, um, the diaphragm sorry, is part of the the head. And it connects electrically to the rest of the mic. So I'll just show you these quickly. There's the on off switch here for the, for the laser. Um, then we have the voice in, which is uh, vintage, modern or hybrid, so I guess one's going to be a, a little darker, uh, one brighter and one in between. Um, but what's kind of different about that is there are sort of um, electrical induction changes, um, rather than a kind of post-capture EQ, so the... Um, the actual electronics at the time of capture are slightly different, um, so that, that's quite interesting. Be good to hear that. Okay, so we have a, a filter cut here as well, three positions. So, and then we have pads. So we have zero, minus ten, minus twenty. Now I want to show you something quickly um, of what happens if I turn the laser on here. You, you can see that uh, bottom channel there that I've got the laser on is maxing out. And you see there's still a signal present there. So that signal going in there, that's the sound of the laser. And that sounds like this. So if you, that, that's the actual sound of the laser. In fact, let's sample that. You can see the laser dots there, and um, they're of equal brightness. So at the moment, the Starlight mics are being powered by the Sound Devices 702 there, and that's got a very good phantom power supply coming out. And um, testing one two three, testing one two three. So that's the Starlight coming in on the. Uh, on the sound devices plus we've got pretty you know kind of bright lasers there now we have the Starlight mics plugged into this uh, Focusrite Sapphire 24 DSP uh, put on phantom power mic gains on zero okay so if I turn on this laser first now that's kind of reasonably bright it's not quite as bright as the sound devices but if I turn on the second laser, you, you, you can see them both dimming down there. So obviously the phantom power supply is critical to, you know, operation in a bright environment, let's say that. Okay, so that's in a darkened room with the Focusrite Sapphire. And now with an overhead light on. There we see the lasers on different material surfaces of the guitars. Here we have a stereo pad, the Aston Starlights. Um, the pad is off, the high pass filter is off, it's on uh, vintage voicing at the moment. 
and what have we got there? And the lasers are off. Okay, testing. So that's the first thing. I'm fine with the sapphire interface. I find I'm needing quite a bit of gain. Um, this is an excerpt from the Origin, the Origins of Music collection of essays. A flute-like perforated thigh bone of a young cave bear was found in 1995 in solid breccia layer 8 at Divje Barbe 1 cave site in Slovenia. The find originates from a reliably dated middle Paleolithic level and could that thus be the oldest musical instrument so far known. A flute-like perforated thigh bone of a young cave bear was found in 1995 in solid breccia layer 8 at Divje Barbe 1 cave site in Slovenia. The find originates from a reliably dated middle Paleolithic level and could thus be the oldest musical instrument so far known. A flute-like perforated thigh bone of a young cave bear was found in 1995 in a solid breccia layer 8 at Divje Barbe 1 cave site in Slovenia. The find originates from a reliably dated middle Paleolithic level and could thus be the oldest musical instrument so far known. All over the land I'll teach you the law Of the old 3D pen Come all of your gear sluts All over the land I'll teach you the law Of the old 3D pen
I mean, my feeling here is that you need a good preamp to get the best out of these. You need one with a good 48 volt phantom power supply, not some one that's maybe okay on one mic. Because um, you want to get the best out of the lasers. I mean, I say my review, I don't think they're a gimmick. You know, they, they are. It's kind of opened my eyes up a bit, really, to how I approach things. It would be good if they can have like a distance thing, right? So you had some kind of readout on here and um, it tells you the, the distance away, especially for kind of repeating setups. But I just want to try um, some of this stuff with, okay, so we're in vintage mode. Okay, so I like these mics, the Starlights, Hassan Starlights. They, um, I tested the Spirit before, which is a la large diaphragm um, multipolar mic, and these are great, really well built. Um, the switches might be a little, um, a little clumsy and a little small for people with large fingers. I mean, Shrek size, right? Fingers. And also it's quite hard to see the legend so there's quite a lot of um, I think there's 11 button positions on these four switches in a small space so I think in a busy session it might be easy to make a mistake with these you know maybe ha have different settings on each mic um, but that's not a major criticism really I mean you know um, a setup needs careful attention and that's that you know uh, it's our responsibility I guess as engineers to you know and Aston have kind of kind of combined all this uh, kind of great great features into the mic um, so um, I can't think of anything else to criticize really I know there's a problem with the lasers but that's the phantom power on the uh, sapphire preamp which again is a budget interface is a great interface but that's the limitations you get with, with these kind of budget interfaces, I think. And I found it much easier to 
um, set the gain on the sound devices preamp, which again is, isn't a budget uh, preamp. So. Kind of well screwed on that. Okay, so I don't know how much light we're getting in there. Okay, that, that's a nice view. This that's the electrical contact, right? So that uh, it's transferring between between the rest of the mic and the capsule. And what I'm going to do is come around here a bit, so you can see. I can get a bit of light inside. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the central connecting pin there. Now that's sending the electrical signal to the rest of the microphone, to the body. And in there you can see the the actual diaphragm that's converting the sound to electricity. And notice the inside shape of that is um, because of this centered head. Which is formed, you know, there's a load of these little balls and the heat formed together. Very, very nice work. It's a nice package that, you know, there's the mic. These are Rycot, uh, Rycot mounts. And I've been using Rycot mounts for a long time. Really like them, uh, very good suspension takes a little while to get used to because it's a tendency to spring back right so you may think you know out the box you may think oh it's hard to get the laser to point exactly where I want but um, it, it uh, precision comes quite quickly so it's not too much of a problem um, as you say there's a stereo spacer bar here with um, it's quite nice the measurements on both sides for replication um, I, I don't see any angle Right, so uh, sometimes you, you could have an angular, um, you know, say that's um, 15 degrees or whatever. But maybe I'm missing that. So um, anyway, pretty good little package. I'll tell you what, this is, this is very light, very, very light. So um, I imagine that's, you know, nice for location recording, stuff like that. Or, you know, put it in your backpack. Um and, and the kit also comes with, so you have the stereo spacer bar, the microphones, there are these other mounts there and a couple, a couple of winds, windshields and a nice informative little manual so um, it's a good job, nothing too over the top, I mean you're not paying for a wooden box here or anything like that. I've enjoyed working with these, unfortunately it's been a short review, we, we might have done a lot more but uh, oh, there's one final thing I want to say about the lasers as well. So. If I, I have these drums in the corner, so what this allows me to do, I found, is that say I want to point this at a certain point on the djembe, maybe I just want to get the head, and then maybe I want to position this towards the bongos or the other drums. So this gives me. You, you, you don't. You don't necessarily have to use these as a stereo pair, right? You can do a lot more. So, for example, there are two amp, uh, two amps uh, to the right there. Again, you could position the lasers on these amps, you know, and um, mark the spot on the amp, perhaps where the laser needs to match up to for reference. So, um, there's a lot more to this than the obvious, you know, what, what meets the eye on first. Um. Anyway, good work, Aston. Cheers, gears, lads. All the best now.